Now, let's postulate the energy neurodriver. The energy neurodriver works like this. There is, inside our bodies, a system which is hardwired. It's not software, it's hardwired in the body. And what it does is it pays attention. It's totally run unconsciously. And it goes like this. How much energy do we have today? How much energy do we have inside of us today? See, the unconscious mind is in charge of your body. And it's in charge of the survival of your body. The unconscious mind knows no energy means death. Now, when you're walking along and there's no energy, by the way, energy flows through polarity, right? And when a person's walking along and there's no energy, what happens there is one day the unconscious mind wakes up and it goes, oh no, I'm going to die. 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 I better get a manager that gets a manager better now. Otherwise, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I, now, 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 now. I need energy now, 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 now. Right? So have you ever felt that in a relationship? Most likely, if you've been in a relationship, you have. And now how it manifests is it's bizarre because a person is going along and they meet the same people that they've worked with for the last 10 years or whatever, and there was nothing there. And all of a sudden, they notice, whoa. They feel an energy between themselves and one of their coworkers, and they go, whoa, God, what does this mean? Right? I mean, and then they give all these reasons, right? And they say, I'm a happily married person. I certainly wouldn't flirt with anybody. I do. I feel what's going on. And then their conscious mind goes nuts, right? But the fact is, because the person had not invested energy in that marriage over a period of time, by that point, it feels uncontrollable. And I'll tell you why. How can I tell you this, right? You would think, just for a moment now, yeah, you would think that JFK or Bill Clinton, right, when they were presidents of the United States, you think that they would be able to keep it in their pants, wouldn't you? No, I'm serious. See, here's the most powerful man in the world. They go, I'm the commander in chief, right? And each one of them know, you know, how much security is around the White House and there's video cameras all over there. And let's keep in mind, uh, for JFK at least, where marriage and family was a pillar of American society. And the idea of the president of the United States having an extramarital affair was unheard of. And while JFK has gone down in history as one of the great presidents of American history, his election was actually extremely controversial at the time as he was the first Catholic to take office. For this reason, keeping a spotless public appearance was crucial for his campaign. So his affair with such a public figure as Marilyn Monroe was an extremely risky move on his part. I'm sure we've all seen the Happy Birthday Mr. President video, right? The two weren't very subtle. And Bill Clinton, you know, I'm sure he says, I'm going to be a good boy, <laughs> right? This is not criticizing. I've experienced it, and I'm sure you have too, right? This is merely to prove a point, but I'm sure that's what he said. He said, I'm going to be a good boy. And I'm sure that Hillary wanted him to cool it too. I mean, he could have left office as a great president, you know, um, at the time because he was a char charismatic president, international relationships were great, everything uh, went great during his term in office, right? You would think that he would be able to control that consciously. And so here goes Bill Clinton, and you all know the intern Monica Lewinsky, and um, you would think that the most powerful man in the world could keep it in his pants, wouldn't you? You know, I'm sure you would think about that for just a minute. 
are you thinking like at least he could have kept it out of the press, right? Does that surprise you? No, it doesn't make you wonder at all, right? That's the problem. See, you don't wonder because it's beyond the conscious control. That's it. The energy neurodriver is for the most part beyond conscious control. This is why people leave behind families, kids, houses, companies, and other people look at them and go, I cannot get it. He or she had everything they wanted in their life and they leave. And people just wonder, he had everything he wanted in his life. He had a fine family. He had a really great job. He was, uh, had a family, you know, and he was in this position. They made together, him and his wife made together this company and they brought in, and now they're making millions. And now they have this wonderful house and they're all smiling. And why on earth? Why on earth would he leave everything? Why would he leave her? I cannot understand this. What truth, you know, the truth is, right? You feel the energy, the energy neurodriver. If you're still awake and if you're still alive and oh, you're still alive. We need to say that. I need, I also, I also postulate that some people in the process of living actually die energetically and they die energetically which is yes uh and i'm not trying to be offensive right but let's take for example look at hillary clinton we'll just take bill and hillary because they're a good example did she have any energy did bill have any energy for her no not a chance in fact when they walked across the white house lawn together they always put someone or something in between them like a dog or hillary or even chelsea right they would all they would even put chelsea in between them as they walked down uh you know any anywhere together so seriously um now what happens often by the way, in families, because the kid wants to be in the middle, which is only further serves to reduce the polarity. But that's another subject. You have to understand a plug in one of the prongs. The energy doesn't flow. And it's not just they derive energy from each other. That's what happens. The, the flow of energy to occur in the first place. See, when a couple has a lot of energy between the plus and the minus in the couple, what happens is they become one side of the polarity with the universe, greater potential. And the polarity on the physical plane within a couple increases the polarity between each of them and the universe. So they become a magnet for drawing down spiritual energy. Because even though the woman is negative pole and the man's positive pole, the man and the woman are always the negative pole compared to spirit because spirit has more positive pole than man and woman on earth as a unit. So what happens then is that the man and the woman together You've seen people in a relationship, in a happy relationship, and you look at them and you go, man, that relationship, they're so happy, it's spiritual. Have you seen that? Yeah, everybody has seen that. That's, that's what I mean when we describe it that way. So the polarity of the man and the woman draws down the spiritual energy. And I'm going to say something, it's really unspiritual, <laughs> because a lot of times the man will say in the relationship, oh, I'm not interested in sex anymore. Now, I've got a theory, and the theory comes from Huna. It's pretty simple, and it goes like this. If you're in a relationship with someone and you're not having sex with them, 
it doesn't mean they are not having sex. Even if you're not, in fact, the odds are based on studies around the world without exception, no matter where you look, that men and women have affairs equally, right? Women just tend to be a little bit more discreet about it, and men tend to brag about it more. But the truth is, if you're not having sex with your partner, let's go back to our example real quick. Did Bill Clinton have sex outside of the relationship? Sure, right? Now, do you think Hillary was in plausible denial about it or what? A lot of people say that they had an arrangement. And the man always says, by the way, um, that they had an arrangement and, hey, me and my wife, we don't have sex anymore and blah, 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 blah. And the woman usually buys it, right? That's just because that's how it works. But see, one of two things will happen. Either the energy will slow down and ultimately die and it does die, and a person will be absolutely energetically dead. They'll accept it. I had a client uh, once say to me, um, he was 50, and my days of passion are over, (laughs) right? That's what he said, my days of passion are over. And I said, what? You're nuts, right? Yeah, or um, as you said, one day the energy neurodriver will have the person linked to another person and they'll feel the energy and all of a sudden this energy will constitute a truck attraction to another person right now what most people do when they feel the energy neurodriver is it's undeniable most people think um and what the the people do is they feel and they say i found my soulmate oh yeah they go I found my soulmate because they have to explain it somehow. And the truth is that no such thing, I'm not saying that there's no such thing. I'm not saying that there's no such thing as a soulmate. I'm saying is what they feel is the energy. They feel energy. It's not the soulmate necessarily, unless it is. And it may be, I mean, it's possible, but let's take the possibility of the soulmate out of the equation for them. Oftentimes, the energy that they run off to have an affair with is clearly not the soulmate. Although he or she might be good at energy, the first person that they usually hook up with energetically is generally not the soulmate. Although you feel as, you know, you go, whoa, never felt like anything like that before. And They try to figure it out, right? I think she's my other half, my soulmate. So they get into the relationship and they realized, like after the energy dies down, oh no, I got into a bad relationship and they start looking around to figure out what happened. So they fall for the energy so hard and they have absolutely no other criteria. And then after they start to get uh, discrimination and they realize, you know, oh, energy plus personality. Ah, yeah. Um, Plus we need to have uh, a conversation and there are other things that have to be present. So, by the way, I have many other tracks and upper level trainings devoted completely to relationships and other things like this in relationship to energy. And I spend a lot of time going a lot more in depth in the ancient teachings.